All right, what's up guys? So today let's talk about something a little bit different, but still involving night vision. Now, uh, a couple weeks ago, I was at the range uh, doing some stuff, filming some video, and, uh, and I was using my PVS-14 on my helmet. Well, I don't get a lot of reps with my 14. I just don't. Um, so getting those reps in is important to me because then I can get some practice and stuff like that, but also um, see the things that students that have 14 see. So it helps me kind of uh, correlate the two. But today we're not going to talk about the PBS 14. There's tons of videos uh, on it on my channel, but we're going to talk about what happened. So that day I went to go lift my night vision on my Wilcox G22 mount, and the G22 mount has a button, right, to lift the night vision upward. Right next to that button is the button to release the mount off my helmet, and <laughs> I hit the wrong one. Right, uh, trying to go fast, and of course, uh, I made a mistake, right? So, of course, here comes the whole mount, my night vision device, all the way to the ground. And it's a concrete floor uh, at, to a concrete shooting range. So, <laughs> it took a pretty hard spill, and, and you can see it here. And they're okay. <laughs> but it takes a hard spill. I really did my, my, my best to catch it, but I couldn't see. <laughs> so there was very little ability for me to catch it because I was just going off of like my best guesstimations on the mathematicians in my noggin to catch this thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it didn't work out and it hit the ground pretty hard. Um, and I thought it was okay for the most part and it worked fine, but uh, it definitely took a pretty hard spill on the front lens assembly, right? The, the objective lens. And uh, shit happens, right? So I break things quite often. Now, when it comes to night vision, I usually don't break things as often just because they are more expensive. So I, I take a little extra care in them than I do with other objects that I have. Um, but of course, Ranger going to smash things. So um, I'll overlay a little picture of, of what happened to it and where I broke it. But these are the kind of things that happen, right? This, this happens to dudes that are just going out to, to play with their night vision, go hunting, or guys that are using it to practice for work, or guys on operations that take a spill or lose their night vision off their helmet or whatever. And if it's recoverable, right, the night vision is recoverable, you put it back on, it still works, rock on. But you may need to get that thing serviced. So uh, a good spill of your night vision may rattle things around on the inside that aren't supposed to be rattling around. So I've seen it where um, little shavings from the inside of housings get into or in front of the lens and then it looks like a big squiggly hair or something like that. You need to get that kind of like cleaned out and purged and, and uh, taken care of. Uh, I've seen guys that they take a hard spill and all of a sudden their lens cracks and it's not usable anymore. Uh, with this being cracked on the side, it's still usable, but at the same time, it makes me feel a little like uneasy about my night vision being used on uh, a range, especially if it rains or if it's too humid, which in South Florida, that's like every night or every day. So uh, I need to get it serviced. Two different ways to get your night vision serviced. The first one is the warranty, right? The warranty that comes with your night vision device based on where you bought it. Now, warranty services, they expire at some point or maybe you bought one secondhand and it just doesn't have a warranty. That's okay. So there's a second option, right? And the, the service that you can go to and it is Sam Houston. Uh, he owns a company called Silent Solutions. Uh, a lot of people don't know about it. Um, I mean, they may know of him because he works for TNVC as well, but he also repairs night vision on the side that isn't TNVC oriented or isn't part of the warranty program that TNVC has. So he can, he can go ahead and evaluate what you have going on. The best way to reach him is usually by going on to his Instagram and messaging him. So it's just silent solutions, one word. And you can get a lot of 
good information from him on night vision because he's been building these for years and uh and not only that but he's been teaching people how to use these for years so uh him and don edwards have been teaming up for night fighter classes and sam also teaches for john level but one of the things he specializes in is building and repairing night vision so if you have a unit that you've trashed or you've you've broken in some way or fashion you should contact him let him know what it is and and let him evaluate it he's obviously going to charge you for it this isn't a free service but he may be able to fix it depending on what it is now let's say you have a set of night vision that's not usually available to the civilian population right like pbs 31s now they're really easy to get don't get me wrong 31s are really easy to get second hand but servicing them is going to be a pain in the ass so depending on what what you've uh what or how you acquired them whether it was uh through a buddy that has a leo like program or through the the interwebs on craigslist or whatever however you acquired them just be aware that you may have to go and backtrack through that to go get them repaired or you're gonna have to find some kind of night vision company that's going to accept them to take them back to l3 so I'm sure there's other ways as well. I just haven't figured them out, and I don't use 31s because of the fact that they aren't uh, easily serviceable. I like night vision that's easily serviceable. PBS 14s, anything with PBS 14 style um, lens assemblies and tube specs or tubes are very much serviceable by the majority of night vision companies. That's why the DTMVSs and DTMVGs, RNVGs, all those different. Um, sets of night vision that are based around the PVS 14 style uh, is super, super serviceable and usable for me. So the, the lens assemblies on both these types of night vision, this has a cap on it, um, are relatively the same, uh, if not exactly the same. So I can go ahead and service these rel really easily. And, and usually I go through Sam. Sam's the one who builds all my night vision for me because I trust him to not fuck me over like the internet will if you go to some random guy just be aware of that so um it's just something that i wanted to throw out there because a lot of people break shit just like me and some people just don't know that there are services out there to get your night vision repaired in some way uh, other than your manufacturer's warranty or the distributor's warranty depending on where you bought it but a lot of guys are getting these second hand and don't have warranties to them. And this is something you can do. Um, hope this helps you guys with a little bit of knowledge on, on at least uh, night vision if you break it or destroy it in some way. Um, some things are just not repairable and some things are going to cost way more than others. But it's on a case by case basis. So good luck with it. And uh, just be careful. Like uh, we all break shit, but <laughs> at some point you're, you're going to go too far. So just be aware and uh, take care of your night vision. Not useless chatter, I am not that rapper. Deep in subject matter, does that even matter?